Today we're joined by Ella Donegan, who is who recently finished her A-levels in physics and maths at in Northern Ireland, and recently applied for work experience with the University of Cardiff, working with the Europlanet project and the Down to Earth projects, and will be going to university in Yale in the US uh, in the coming year, but also has many other passions such as training to be a Commonwealth athlete in the 2022 games doing the butterfly. So thank you for joining us today, Ella. Thank you for having me. It's really great experience to talk with you. Can you describe a little bit about the process of applying for work experience with Cardiff University and the challenges and opportunities that's uh, allowed you to do? Um, yes, so about three years ago, when I was in my second last year of school, of high school, um, we had a week set apart in the school year to do work experience. And I was really determined to do something in the, phys the physics field, but outside of maybe in the STEM field, but outside of engineering or teaching. So I was trying to find somewhere in the physics arena, maybe in academia or in outreach. And so I started to send emails to anyone that was involved in this field. So basically to the head of the UK Space Agency and any of his contacts, anything I could find online. I was just very determined to, for someone to take me on in my offer. Um, I was luckily set up with Paul Roche from Cardiff University. And since then, I have been doing work experience or internships on and off since then for the past year. Sorry, three years. So that's really exciting. And you've been working quite closely with their educational teams to come up with lesson plans for schools and uh, secondary school pupils. And you've been working quite a lot with pop culture. So you've done a little bit about like the Don't Look Up uh, kind of film that was recently kind of very memeable and very kind of in the zeitgeist kind of recently. Has How has this approach kind of, has it been kind of well received by the students? Uh, and yeah, do you think kind of having this sort of point of entry is quite useful for other people to just sort of gain an interest in the space sciences, do you think? Definitely, I think it's very engaging to have something that's sort of in pop culture that people are immediately drawn to. So even if I run ideas past my friends, and um, if I'm just talking about impact creators, they're probably not really listening. But when I talk about an asteroid heading towards Earth and Leonardo DiCaprio was in the movie, that sort of gets people's attention. And then once you kind of get them with that initial hook of sort of like something in pop culture or even just something in the field of dinosaurs, that was always a good topic to get people engaged in science. And um, it just makes them more receptive to learning, I think, when they've already got a bit of an interest. And yeah, it makes the topic a little less intimidating as well. It's like an easy entry into the sort of more finer details. And there always seems to be something in the news about there being an asteroid coming to Earth. I saw today on the Daily Mail that there's a new supersized one and then on April Fool's there was actually one. It wasn't an April Fool's joke. So there always seems to be something in the news about some sort of asteroid coming towards Earth. So it's always sort of in the public eye a little bit. Exactly. It's very topical, especially now with the Don't Look Up film. Um, but it's always been there and it's always something that will be there. And um, with different companies starting to look more into like planetary defense it's just a topic that people are eager, eager to learn about because it really will affect all of us or could affect all of us so it's an easy thing to learn about. So you have quite a lot of other side passions as well like obviously kind of uh, STEM education and kind of science is one of them but also you do quite a lot of charity work and obviously we mentioned about you training to to uh, compete in the next Commonwealth Games can you talk about sort of that aspect of your life and why you feel it's important to sort of pursue these other passions? Yes, definitely. So I do a lot of charity work with Homeless Period Belfast. So we recently were up at Stormont, which is the parliament buildings here in Northern Ireland. Um, we got a bill passed to provide free period products in public buildings. That's just a really important issue that I think should be talked about more openly. And um, that's why I got involved in it and have been since I was uh, in school. And then swimming is just something I've done my whole life. And yeah, I'm hoping to qualify for the Commonwealth Games to represent Northern Ireland. I think it's really important to have other interests outside of your work. And although I love science and I'm really passionate about it, it doesn't um, negate my ability to have passions elsewhere. I think it just makes me more uh, bonded person. And I get to have different experiences, learning from different people, pulling from them and bringing that to my work instead. You can learn from everybody. 
I suppose it just sort of, it kind of demonstrates Kat, that scientists are three-dimensional people. They have other interests outside of science and yeah, kind of like move away from this stereotype of just sort of like kind of. Yeah, there's definitely a stereotype that scientists are only interested in science and personally from who I've met in working in STEM, that's really not the case. Um, everyone has their other interests, but we come together and work on something that's we all, we're all passionate about. But in order to do effective work, you have to pull from different experiences because if we all were just interested in science, I don't think we'd be as successful because we would just all have the same experience. So you seem to juggle quite a lot of different kind of activities as well as your, uh, well, you've just finished your education just at uh sixth form but you also have your work experience your charity work and your training how has that been and I don't know what sort of advice would you give to people who have a lot of passions but only have so many hours in the day yeah that's definitely something I've learned from a young age um we train very early in the morning so time management was always very key for me at school like getting all my bags packed the night before little things like that um I think structure and routine is really important when you want to do a lot of different things um just setting aside time. I'm a firm believer that the longer you have to do a task, it will take you that long. But if you have 30 minutes, you're gonna get it done in 30 minutes. And that's sort of just the mentality I take to it. Um, I remember why I want to do everything. And then that kind of motivates me to get it all done. <laughs> and has it been important to have kind of like a support network in place to sort of help you to, if you're having a feeling a bit of stress due to the swimming or all your workloads feeling a little bit overloaded, just sort of like how important it is to have people kind of that, that just knowing what you're going through and can kind of not pick up the slack so much, but just sort of be there to kind of support you as you attempt to fit all these things into your busy life. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, before I was able to drive when I was like 16, 15, it was my mom or dad getting up with me at 4.40 to drive me to swimming. So they have been like a huge support system to me and encouragement when I was sending out those emails all those years ago asking for work experience they were the ones who were um, encouraging me to do it and especially when I was doing my A-levels as well as doing all this um, they were definitely there to be like it's okay take a break um, which you know sometimes you need reminded to sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah exactly yeah and yeah, it's just sort of making sure that you don't burn out as well, because especially with kind of post, well, not even post COVID, midst of COVID, it's just sort of so hard, especially with the online working and everything, just sort of like making sure that you have that disconnect between well, side hustles and the work you're doing, but also time to sort of just recharge a little bit. Exactly, yeah. My whole experience working in STEM, like outside of school has been virtual. Um, so I think it's important to like, close the computer and walk outside <laughs> um, and live normal life and for a bit it's a lot harder when you haven't got um, strict office hours. Yeah, exactly yeah I think we, a lot of us can uh, can relate to that a little bit but uh, coming up to you're coming up to a new chapter in your life of course you're going to be doing the your tryouts for the Commonwealth Games so hopefully that might lead to something equally quite exciting but you're going to also be going you're going to be moving to the US to go to Yale for university. How are you feeling about that like it's it's kind of daunting I imagine but also quite exciting and kind of I don't know you've heard about like students from the last couple of years going to university kind of at the height of COVID but now I don't know there's going to be a new chapter and kind of are you hoping to keep up all like Karen continue with your STEM kind of outreach stuff and your studies and your swimming right and yeah also socialize and kind of meet a whole new group of people like how are you feeling about that? Um, I'm really excited if I'm being honest I think I'm definitely nervous but um, I've been looking forward to this for a long time and I did take a gap year from school to in order to apply to the state so I've something I've thought long long and hard about so I know that it's the right thing for me um, and I'm being incredibly like, lucky to be accepted into Yale. Uh, I won't be able to do my outreach work during the school year but in like spring break or winter break and summer I'm hoping that I'll be able to pick it up um, back where I left and keep helping or just pick up all jobs that people things need done with the planet or down to earth. I'd love to keep on um, working with the people that I've been currently working with. And yeah, I'm just really excited to meet all the new people out there and uh, learn a lot of new things in university and just yeah, enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That seems like a very 
that seems like a very nice sort of kind of like goal for the next couple of years, I think. Uh, but kind of looking forward a little bit, I know it's the dreaded kind of like five year, five year job plan sort of question. But I don't know, you're you're, you're studying physics and maths at Yale. Uh, have you had any thoughts about what you'd like to do after that? Would you like to stick in kind of like the space fields or perhaps do more science communication or just sort of is it an open book at the moment and you just see how all these life experiences kind of drop in your lap a little bit? Um, I think I would love to work in the space sector uh, ever since I, I think maybe like since 15, 14, I've really wanted to work in the space sector. When I was that age, it was I wanted to be an astronaut, but um, I'd be happy just to work in like the media communications team, but I want to be involved in that sort of, you know, final frontier. I want to be in reaching distance of that. Um, I think it's a really exciting field to be involved in. And yeah, it's something where my passions lie. So I would be shocked if that's where I don't end up going, but I mean, I, I'm open to change and see where things go. Can you remember the time you said it was kind of like 15 where you kind of had this sort of shift in your brain about maybe wanting to work in STEM and the science fields? Can you remember, was there any kind of switch? Like, can you kind of point that, point to any kind of particular thing that happened in your life that kind of thought, yeah, actually, this is kind of what I want to do? Yeah, I think it was starting my GCSEs and really the subjects got more, um, so you drop a lot of subjects obviously before you do your GCSEs and the topics get a bit more interesting and I was finding myself like reading um, outside of school about physics or reading about different figures in science whereas uh, I wasn't doing that as much in the other subjects. I was like, oh, it'd be really cool if I could be like them or work with them or just do something in that field. So I read a lot of like finding books and watch some of his lectures I mean first of all it just went over my head completely but it was just hearing that sort of like theoretical um talk about the universe was really um I think it was just like eye-opening I was like I'd love to be involved in something that is so like universal and like existential but also really practical and you could literally go and look at the stars and things like that and um, so I think about when I started my GCSE it would be a turning point and then my work experience when actually seeing what a career in STEM could look like I was like yeah this is for me and that work experience really I don't know was it beforehand were you a little bit apprehensive about is this what I want to do and kind of like just having this experience with Cardiff University just sort of like cemented the fact that yes this is this is a field I kind of like and I would love to continue kind of down this track a little bit yeah I think definitely it was the work experience especially in recent years I mean I loved it when I was off school but it was quite short whereas now I've been doing it for like six months pretty consistently and I really learned the the side of creativity that comes with STEM so creating these sort of educational resources I think it just showed me that there is so much more to STEM than just academia or engineering or teaching and um, even though I was first interested in academia I can see that there's other avenues to explore so it's definitely been very pivotal for me in my journey. And were you presenting your lesson plans to students? Uh, were you doing quote unquote face to face kind of over Zoom with the students or were you working with the academic staff perhaps a bit more? Uh, no, I was basically on the creation side and um, not on the delivery. There has been talks about teacher conferences, but I'm not really sure if I'll be able to deliver them to the teachers. Um, we're at the stage right now where the resources are finished. It's just getting teachers to look at them and see if they have any. Um, pointers because of course they're the ones in the classroom not me and I though although I think it's useful coming from someone who's just left the education system like I know what a student wants to see they know what a teacher needs and how that needs to be delivered so hopefully we'll get the green light from them soon. So you can kind of bridge that gap between being student and being teacher a little bit more perhaps. Yeah exactly it's definitely not something you can do on your own you need a whole team the village. Yeah uh, so what advice would you give to uh, any young people kind of in a similar situation to you who has a passion for multiple things, it being STEM or kind of with you in your swimming and your charity work? Uh, but yeah, how would what advice would you give to someone who has a lot of aspirations? But yeah, uh, only a little bit of time. You talk a little bit about the time management before, but I don't know. Is there any other advice you'd like to give? Um, yeah, definitely. I think it's a little bit cringe, but just don't limit yourself. Like, um, yes, there's only 24 hours in the day, but you have so much like potential within you to do different things. And 
um, go back to the point that like there is like, the stereotype of a scientist is not accurate and you can make it what you want to be so just to continue to follow your passions and see where they take you and um, learn from every opportunity because there's a lot of crossover between what I've learned in sport like the so resilience in sport has led me to resilience in academia and then communication skills in charity work talking to different people has led directly into something like this like I'm comfortable to talk to you because I've spoken to so many different people in that um, so yeah just to keep learning because you never know where those skills will cross over um, to ask loads of questions because that's the only way I got my work experience was to reach out to people and just hope that they say yes. <laughs> I think that's some pretty good advice. So uh, thank you very much for this quick conversation and good luck with the tryouts in a few weeks time and yeah. have the best time at Yale. Like it's going to be really exciting and it's just going to be great. So thank you very much for joining us, Ella. Thank you for having me. Thank you.